Now, in this question, we're asked to solve this trigonometric equation, 5 sine theta minus 5 cosine theta equals 2 in this range. And there's several ways that we can do this. I often find that students want to square both sides of the equation. Yes, you can do this, and I've done it in another video. It's not a method, though, that is easy. You've got to take care with solutions. No, the method that I prefer to use is this method, where we take this harmonic formula and rewrite this expression in this form, r sine of theta minus alpha. This equation has this particular form. If you're unsure of this, do go back and check out tutorials on harmonic formula on my website, okay? It's a very quick, easy method once you get used to it. So what we've got here then is 5 sine theta minus 5 cosine theta. It's got this form here. If we were to write that in, you can see that it's identical in form to a sine theta minus b cosine theta, where a is 5 and b is 5. And we can see that the r is the result of square rooting a squared plus b squared. So if you were to do that, r is the result of square rooting 5 squared plus 5 squared. Well, that's going to be 25 times 2, root 50, but keeping it in this form, you can split it up using the laws of thirds. The square root of 25 is 5, and we'll just do the root of 2, just leave it as root 2. So that's our value for r. And alpha is the inverse tan of b over a. So that's going to be the inverse tan of 5 over 5, which leads to the inverse tan of 1, which is... 45 degrees. So that means that we can express our equation here using this result, r sine of theta minus alpha. We can express it as 5 root 2 sine of theta minus 45 degrees, and that equals 2. So all we need to do now is divide both sides by 5 root 2. If you do that, you're left with theta minus 45 degrees equals the inverse sine of 2 all over 5 root 2. And at this point, if we take the inverse sine of 2 over 5 root 2, you get that theta minus 45 degrees is equal to 16.429 and so on degrees. And with this, to get other solutions, I'd want to sketch a quadrant diagram. should be familiar with quadrant diagrams. If not, do check out my tutorials on this. We've got our four quadrants, starting at 0 degrees, 90, 180, 270, back to 360 degrees, if we move in an anti-clockwise sense. Sine is always positive in the first and second quadrants, and we draw two lines then, in the first two quadrants equally inclined to the horizontal here. Okay, so I'll do one there and one there. Okay, so those two angles are meant to be the same. And when we did the inverse sine of theta minus 45 degrees, we got 16.429. So that's going to be this angle in here. It's not drawn to scale, but hopefully it just gives us an idea of what's going on. So we want one of those angles, this is one of them, this is our first one, in the range 0 to 360 degrees, which is a possible value for theta minus 45 degrees. When it comes to our second solution, it's going to be from here, going round here, anti-clockwise to this line. This is another possible theta minus 45 degrees. Okay, so... This one here is our red one. And to get the green one here, all I've got to do is 180 degrees minus the 16.429 degrees. If you do that, you should find you get 163.570 and so on degrees. That's our green one, okay, for theta minus 45 degrees. So it's just a question of adding 45 degrees to both of these answers. If you do that, you'll get these two results here. And then I just need to round these up to one decimal place. And if you do that, 
you end up with our two answers, theta being 61.4 degrees and 208.6 degrees, both to one decimal place then. OK, so I prefer this method compared to a squaring method. As I say, you can check that out in the other video that I've done that accompanies this one. OK, if you're on my website, you should see it. OK, so uh, there we go. Hope you've been able to follow that.